not, not bad. Not bad. Hey, hi everyone. We're live. We're live. It's book chat time. A big hello to everyone. Thank you, Kay Frito, who redeemed Lurk. But I don't have gift bot open because today we are flying by the seat of our pants. <laughs> um, I have where to cover. <laughs> Great start, Maud. Where the hell has my summary gone? I just looked it up. Priory. We're covering Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon today. A fantastic book that I actually have the physical copy of. Look how big it is. Look how big this book is. It is so thick and a lot to do. It is a standalone fantasy book. Um, bleh. Summary. And I had the summary for it. We're real professional here at Geek Bomb. We're on top of it all. Kay Frito says, big book. How is everybody? Um, okay, I pulled it up again. Fantastic. Uh, Dad Ketchum's lurking. A big hello to you. Kate says, it's a chunk. Now, Kate, you've read this one before. You've read it a couple of years ago. Crandolph says, hey, poops. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the mood for that today. You get away with it. Uh, Kate? You read this book before? Last year. Okay. Now, you said initially you were, because I read your Goodreads review, initially you were deterred by the size of it because it was so big, but you quickly um, were so enthralled sort of with the, the premise of the book that that didn't matter anymore, right? Or like, and the first few chapters, like, everything with epic fantasy, like, there's a lot of lore dump, but there's a lot of getting used to magic systems or political systems or all that kind of stuff. So you're just still very like loose footed because you don't know who these factions are. There's all these like new names because it's a fantasy world. So at first, yeah, it was like a lot. It was like, oh boy, when I started reading it, it's like, this is a thick book for all of this. Once you kind of get going in this book, I found it really, even though it's thick, it read very easily. Yes, and okay, I'm glad you said that. We're going to get into sort of like the fact that it's a standalone fantasy book, the fact that you are inundated with a lot of lore, a lot of information, a lot of different characters, a lot of regional um, sort of factional different religions, um, background, uh, uh, political system, what's important, what's different about these characters, uh, surrounding characters, a lot of names, a lot of information that you're bombarded with. Um, some people are struggling with getting halfway through the book and it wasn't just a time thing, it was getting through it thing. Aaron, you got to chapter three. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I was kind of telling you before we started that I was probably gonna be quiet because I didn't really get very far, but well, Three chapters that I did read, it just felt like they were throwing character after character after character after character, and you didn't get enough time to breathe with them. And mm. maybe, obviously, other people will be able to say yay or nay on whether it gets better over time, but those three chapters, like, it just felt like I'm being inundated with so much information all at once, and I didn't get a chance to, like, digest things before I'm moving on to another character and another place that I now have to, like, figure out what's going on. Are you listening to the audio book or reading the book? I did a little bit of both. Okay, that's like, where went I'm back at. and forth. Right. Cause, okay. Because I did, because I did like the Kindle's feature where it's like it actually like highlights the thing the narrator's reading, so it's easier to, you know, keep going with, to pay attention. But you're still here, three chapters in. Are you okay with us spoiling it, or do you think that by us discussing this, it's going to help you understand the next part of the book? <laughs> That's probably one of the other reasons why I'm like here tonight instead of just like, you know, skipping until next week. It's like maybe somebody will be able to convince me based on what they're saying. Maybe it'll, you know, yeah, fall into place thing. a little bit. I like that. I yeah. like that. Uh, KP Dubs, thank you so much for resubscribing for your 15th month. Aaron, you just resubscribed for your 20th month. And Kate, we hit a year together. Thank you so much for your resub as well. I really appreciate that. Um, Colleen is saying, Colleen, are you in the chat today? A big hello to you. You're saying it took you a couple of tries to get through the first part, but then you got really captivated. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I was also having trouble with my Kindle app. Um, every time I restarted it, it would jump to some random chapter mm. and got really confusing. Yeah. So I started the, um, or, or the Audible, I mean. Uh, so I started the Audible t twice and read about 12 chapters with the Kindle. Um, but then I felt like I had enough grasp on it that I pretty much just stuck to the Audible after that. Um, for one thing, it's faster. Yes and no. I found that usually I can listen to Audible on a 1.5, even up to 1.8, depending on the performer. I couldn't go any faster than a 1.3. Lisa, you usually listen at lightning fire rapid pace as well. Um, you started this on Monday and you managed to get through half the book in time. How did you, What speed were you listening to it on and how did you go with the audio? 1.5. I was listening. Yeah, I was listening at 1.5 this time. It, I definitely couldn't have gone faster with her because she definitely has a a more quick read than a lot of other narrators do. But I really am enjoying it. I I started off the first uh, maybe probably like six chapters reading along with my Kindle just so I could get get a grasp of the names and stuff that they were throwing at me. But yeah, it's I a listened lot. To, mostly on Audible. Okay, okay. Uh, Michelle says, hi, book friends. Finishing up some work this evening, so I'll mostly, mostly be listening in. I really enjoy, I'm really enjoying this book, though. Lovely to have you, even if it's just in the chat. Uh, I'll make sure I read out all of your comments. Baden says, I agree with you, Aaron. Early on, it changes POV and region so quickly that it can be overwhelming. Black Belt says, it's definitely worth pushing through the initial slog slash confusion of information and characters. Um... Jimmy, you were saying that it took a couple of, uh, had to read a couple of pages just to understand it better as well. Uh, Kate says, we've talked about books that have a learning curve before on Book Club with Black Leopard, Red Wolf being the biggest example. I feel like this one does too. Not in the same way because the writing style and language is straightforward, but in that you have a lot of info at first that you have to wrap your brain around everything. But once you orientate yourself after the first 25%, it really does start to fly. I think we can all agree that this is an overwhelming, a mass of information straight out the gate. Um, oh, thank you, Jcast529 for the follow. Welcome, we are doing a book chat. This is our book. I'll make it a bit bigger because that looks a little small. Bing. Um, it's a standalone fantasy book. I'm going to read the back of the blurb so you can get an understanding of what this book's about. We're going to talk not only about the different north, south, east, west storylines and the characters, who we resonated with, uh, what were the standouts, what was the fascinating part about the religion and the lore and the history um, and how what you worship ne isn't necessarily true. Um, Shannon's uh, Samantha Shannon's understanding um of religion and what you worship uh blindly sometimes that's a really good discussion that we can have as well um the use of dragons and uh the mythos in this book too oh yes so i can do it i'll read the blurb <clears throat> the house of berethnet has ruled innes for a thousand years still unwed Queen Sabran the Ninth must conceive a daughter to protect her realm from destruction, but assassins are getting closer to her door. Iad Dur Durian, Durian, not Durian, Dur Dur Durian, is an outsider at court. Though she's risen through the position of lady in waiting, she's a loyal to a hidden society of mages. Iad keeps a watchful eye on Sabran, secretly protecting her with forbidden magic. Across the Dark Sea, Tane has trained to be a dragon rider since she was a child, but is forced to make a choice that could see her life unravel. Meanwhile, the divided East and West refuse to parlay, and forces of chaos are rising from their sleep. Fascinating how they could try to get a blurb, because I, I think I tried to record a TikTok where I was going to say what it's about, and there's a reason why I didn't post it. I was like, I'm currently reading the pri Orange Priory. Fuck, the Priory of Oranges. No, the, what is it? Got it. Okay, I'm trying to read the Priory of the Orange Tree and it's about 
well, several people <laughs> from different regions doing lots of different things. And I don't really know who the main storyline is um, or what the most important part is, but dragons. But not just dragons, like Western dragons and worms that are somehow procreating with different animals to create an army. <laughs> and I was like, delete. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, I do think it's very ambitious that it's a standalone book. I guess I want to open it up to chat and anyone who wants to um, unmute, go for it. Do you think that maybe there should have been a duology or a trilogy? Do you think it was ambitious? I personally yes. like that it's a standalone because just as someone who is a bookseller, standalone fantasies do not exist anymore. No. So when you get one that people just is like, you know, just want a book without having to, you know, read a whole series, very difficult to find these days. So I really actually appreciate that even though it's thick, a standalone. Okay. You're right. They're so rare. And I feel like fantasy is getting a massive reputation for being one book of 24, you know, and you're like, Ugh, and it's a slog. Um, and I, I went into books and was so, uh, ag not against, but I found it so hard to get into comics because of that exact same thing. There are so many issues and it's like, well, where do I even like, do I have to start at the beginning? That's so, that's such a big undertaking. So I get it. Uh, Darian, you've unmuted. Do you have thoughts about it being a standalone? This should have 100% been at least a duology. Okay. Being a standalone, structurally, it gives it so many problems. All right. All right. So talk me yeah. through how this book's layout could have been done better because you said that you needed to restart this book twice. The start is rough. How could it have been more palatable? I don't know. Um, it's it's um, it's a it's very disorienting for like the first maybe five or six chapters. So like, you, I, I kind of just glazed over a bunch of things. So I needed to go back and reread it. So like because it just wasn't gripping me. But um, I think as um, Kate said, like once you get through that, it it picks up. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so it, it had a starting problem in uh, just knowing who it's focusing on, where they're talking about. It kind of... Oh, we just lost you. You will. Oh, just cut off. Say that one again. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh... You're kidding. It did it again. Character is a bit better <laughs> because it, it is a bit disorienting at the start. Got it. The It's just cutting in and out and it cuts back in at the same part of your sentence, which I'm starting to think is like, it's a, not a coincidence. You, um, you have ghosts, you have ghosts in your place, Darian. Very likely. And they're messing with you. Mm -hmm. You have to banish them. Say, we do not need you here right now. Maud's trying to run a show. <laughs> and she's like, hang on. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Right, Panda, thank you so much for resubscribing for your third month in a row. Love hand, hand, having you here. Clover Girl says, get out that sage. Aaron says, I feel like it should have uh, picked a lane or a character and then focus on them rather than shift every single chapter early on. Aaron, if that's the case, who do you think that we should have been focusing on maybe for the first three chapters to get somewhat of an understanding? Uh, I would have picked Ed, the assassin mage lady, because that seemed like the more interesting storyline to follow. The fact that she's like, I'm protecting the queen, and she doesn't have any idea I'm doing this. Everybody yeah. was surprised. It's like, oh, here's a dead body. Where did this dead body come from? And she's just like twiddling her thumbs like, I don't know. <laughs> You're right. I actually really like the start, the opening of this book, and that chapter was a great hook. Like, it really got me into it. Tonally, we lost that almost immediately when we started moving yeah. to different points of views and different regions. And I kind of wish we were able to, uh, yeah, marinate on that just a little bit longer. Or, or and it's like, it's not like the, you know, the, the dragon riding aspect of thing wasn't interesting either, but it's like, okay, if whichever your hook wants to be, like your main thing, just stick with that and then sprinkle the other things in and-, and As more of a time, support, like, okay. 
Yeah, exactly. That's at least my two cents. Got it. Uh, Chris is saying Eads the most in interesting character. Kate straight up said that Eads wife material. Uh, Toaster Poster says, I did not get to the halfway point. This book is written in third person, omniscient, and this style is hard for my brain to process. It's like reading a wiki page with all of the hyperlinks open. I want to love this book. I have a good feeling. Toaster Poster, I'm just glad that you're not only um, giving it a real red hot go, but you're here to even talk about it. That's fantastic. Black Belt Wade in the discussion saying, I love that it's a standalone. The author is writing a prequel, which is exciting. Um, so my story with this, I think uh, it's definitely not an uncommon story here. I got the audiobook. I struggled a little bit with the narration style. It actually reminded me of when we did The Witcher, the first Witcher book about two and a half, three years ago, because the narration style, instead of kind of like really projecting the words out, um, I, I had a little bit of issue with sort of the, I guess you could say the I know, right? Yeah, it's been that long. That was in 2019 that we read The Witcher when we could actually go outside normally. Um, uh, I, I guess like the the way that I would describe it is um, the house of Barathnet and ruled in us for thousands of years, still unwed, Queen Sabran in the ninth. So it's like, it's so staccato and jittery instead of it kind of being like quite a, you can hear every single word instead of just the consonants of the words in a way. Uh, that is a very, very quick way for my ADHD to be like, boom, and not listen. Uh, so I got to, I think it was chapter five or six. And I, we have a reading section in the Discord. Uh, it is a paid perk for being a Patreon backer, but we talk books 24 seven there and we check in with each other. And I, I think a week in, and I was worried because I only, we had like three weeks, two weeks to read it. Uh, I was real nervous because I was up to chapter five or six and I wrote in the reading section, I have no idea what's going on. And I even tried to reflect back on the story thus far and I couldn't piece it together. So I listened to another half a chapter and I was like, I am no, I'm just not aware. I am not clued in. So I went to my local bookshop and I bought the book. And I will tell you that reading the first five chapters made all the difference. Um, I was able to retain it a lot better. I was able to see the words, which I think really, really helped for me because there is a lot of high fantasy flourish with the names, titles, locations. It's a little bit Game of Thrones where it's like, let me tell you about 42 people, one which you'll hear about again. And you're like, why do I need all these names? Um, but I, once I sort of read those six chapters, I was very much sort of like equipped with the information and I was able to go back to the audio book. And it was hit or miss, but it was mainly hit for that one. Uh, Michelle says, I like the standalone so far. I don't mind the uh, disparate storylines. I'd like to reread this again sometime and experiment with reading this one chapter a night and let myself slowly consume the story with more focus. Yeah, that's what I've been struggling with. Focus for sure. Uh, Colleen says, the whole kingdom seems pretentious. Its name is Virtuedom. Oh, Colleen, you have a problem with what it's called? I'd love to learn about this gripe. This is fascinating. Well, just the fact that they think their religion is the only religion, they don't, everybody else is a heretic. Um, they have these knights that represent different virtues mm. and even calling the kingdom virtuedom just really seems to me to be- um, Wankers. <laughs> Yeah, very colonialistic, I guess you could say. You know, we're we're Europeans and we're better than everyone. Got it. Right, right, right. Did um everyone get a real sense of uh the different cultures, north, south, east, and west? Like the description of the characters in the audio book, they had incredibly different accents. Uh, Darian, you noticed that Iad had a Jamaican accent. And even though I thought that Tane's um, Orissima uh, and that sort of city and the surrounding city 
um, has an African accent in the audiobook and and then all the people in um, Virtudom have a very proper English accent, but oh, Virtudom is the religion. Where's the place? What's the place? What's the north? North. North. They're in the north? North. They're in the north. Has someone been to tell me? Is it King Knight in us? Where's Innes? The, the, the kingdom of Innes. Yeah, but it's is it west. north? It's west. Yeah, it's west. Northwest. You know, I've got the map in front of me and it's not so... Oh, there you go. The, king, the kingdom of Innes is in an island on the north. So, no. Britain. The kingdom of Innes is uh, this island at the north. But then they put their logos here, which I think is quite weird. And then you got the Free State of Mintendon. We've got the Kingdom of Froth, which we haven't even heard of yet. Iskallan, which is the East, the Dr Draconic Kingdom. Great. Last year, we've only heard is where the Priory of the Orange Tree is. And the Ursir. Yep. Okay. The map didn't help me. I'm not going to lie, guys. That was just... I love a good map. That one did not help me. But we do have a map. Thank you, K Frito. We have a map. Uh, all right. So everyone's saying to me, Innes, Innes, Innes. Um, Lisa says, I'm glad you guys warned me about the audio. I remembered I bought the Kindle copy forever ago. It did help reading along with the audio. Yeah, I started doing that as well. Um, Ursi is supposed to be the south. Okay, got it. Got it. Huh? <laughs> Um, I think virtudom functions much like Christendom, where it infers both a physical location and then wherever the religion is practiced. Uh, the question that I had, though, with the narrator's uh, different accents, Darian, you were a little bit confuddled. What would you say? You were surprised about the Jamaican accent? You, you referenced it quite early on. I was amused by it. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> Got it. Especially wow. um, when living in the Caribbean and he had a Jamaican accent, I just wasn't expecting to hear it in the book. Yeah, yeah, you sound very similar to Iyad. Oh, Queen Sabran. <laughs> Don't be getting sad about <laughs> this. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, lol, yeah. <laughs> Escalon was the kingdom I was thinking of, the one that I found interesting. Yeah, now... There's just so many layers. And again, it does have a little bit of a Game of Thrones thing where they're all trying to um, not even, it's not to have rulership anywhere. It's not to kind of like sit on the throne per se, but it's the religion's relationship with the dragon that is up for discussion and debate. Um, and who worships the dr draconic uh, kind of deity the nameless one and who believes that it is the dame uh, the damsel that is in charge of everything and then the knight of Verethnet was like the hero and then it's like well that's not true at all as well there's a lot of layers and then what's happening in Escalon that like the person who's in charge is actually being Controlled by the net? I'm just like, okay, I'm only halfway through this book and there's so much happening. But let's chat about the characters in the region, starting with Queen Sabran, Iad, who has been assassinating all of the cutthroats that are trying to end Queen Sabran's life. Why are they trying to kill her? Because according to their law, their legend, she's a descendant of the saint. And it is said that should she keep providing an heir and the Brethnet line continue to rule, the Nameless One will not be able to um, come back. It will keep it at bay. And that's apparently not true. But Iad has been sent by the Priory of the Orange Tree, which is somewhere completely different. They are a sect of mages who have this incredible power. They have like the fire within them, thanks to the blessing of the orange fruit on the tree. Uh, where she's tasked to save Sabran's life for all of this. Oh, thank you, C. Zori. 
Oh, I'm talking about books now. This is the book. This is the book. Thanks for the follow. This is the book we're talking about at the moment. And the alert box is in the, the way. Um, but hello, thank you so much for the comment. Really appreciate that. So already we have a very kind of like complex story. Iad's not who she says she is. She's undercover. There's a whole different sect with magic and magic's forbidden. They call it sorcery. The queen has this legend. She needs to provide an heir. So far, every single queen has produced one child, all a daughter. They all look the same. Fascinating. Other bullshit's going on in the court system. Queen Sabran was too close to a guy. Little Loth. Um, and sweet, sweet, noble-born Loth, whose sister is a handmaiden to the queen. Hey, Reverse Eon, how are you? Too close. They just had a friendship, but it was threatening her to marry, forge an alliance with a different area. And he got sent off. So there's, you know, political intrigue as well with all of this. Vaden, you gifted a sub to Cezori. That's really sweet, Vaden. Thank you so much. Uh, what do you mean about all about appearances? Clever girl. Um, the fact that they were just friends didn't matter at all. Um, the appearance was that he was close, so the Nighthawk just had to get rid of him. Um, the same thing with banishing Iad was, um, it, if this got out, you know, th this is going to look really bad and um, affect our uh, future possibilities. Mm -hmm. So appearances are matter more than facts here. And what's really and interesting, uh, great point, and what's really interesting is that he's making these decisions without her consent. He's doing it on the sly. This is a very good uh, you know, version of the greater good. He's not doing it because he's been commanded to. He truly thinks it's for the greater good. And he's actually, if she knew what was happening, she would sentence him to death, likely. She would just like, it's, it's not what she's wanting. Um, and he's making these decisions on, on her behalf, the greater good. I know Lisa every single time. <laughs> um, uh, Cesar says, Vaden, thank you. I'm happy I found her. I didn't know she was doing this. Yeah, I've been doing it for about two years now, at least once a week. <laughs> Not the last couple of weeks. I've been so busy that I don't think this eye opens all the way anymore. Uh, it's all about the greater good. Oh, you're posting the map in the chat. Loving that. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Darian. Um, I don't know if you got this vibe that I did, but hit me. I always a feeling that like the general people, be it northwest, <laughs> south, or whatever, were having like that conversation. But you know, in place of gods, it's your dad is better than my dad, where they're like, you know what I mean? Like, kind of, I don't know if you've ever had that in Australia, where when I was growing up, it was always like, oh, my dad's a soldier, so blah, 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 and I could do this, and I could do that. And I'm like, no, 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 my dad could do this, and my dad could do that. Oh, I think you we know? call that a pissing contest, but that's just what you do exactly. when you're kids. But, it, you know, people don't grow out of that. <laughs> I know. But it, it, that's what it just seems like. It and, is. And it, was just, and, and it was just like there's, like, that dude that, you know, is too close He's, you know, trying to get into the pissing contest and, and people are like, no, 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 you know, so it's yeah. very interesting. And I think what's, you know, when we look at this political interest, this is when it feels quite Game of Thronesy because it's like these people cease being actual people with lives. They are an inconvenience. They are a threat to the greater good. The greater good. And so <laughs> like Loth was sent away with Kit, um, you know, in the dead of the night, they were basically kidnapped and then put on a ship. Um, and when they were talking about it, like Escalin, Escalin's no longer an ally to Innes. So if they were going to be sent over as representatives, it's like they are immediately, like they could get killed. They could die from uh, being an enemy. They could die from this plague that's um, all over Escalin as well. Like it was basically like they were sent there to die. Um and it was just to kind of like tidy up a loose end to take care of business. And I think that's when we kind of get a bit of a game of Game of Thrones feel. And the fact that Iad is kind of like, you know, the, you know, and the whole nameless one, that's like a little bit um, 
gosh, it's been two years since bloody three years since the show came out. Maisie Williams' character. Ah, yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Feel free to unmute and so like you can actually claim the victory of being right. It's yours for the taking if I get stuck. Um, we'll make it a pissing contest, yeah? <laughs> I know what you're trying to talk about. I uh, don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I like piling. I almost said it. <laughs> I, uh, what is it? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, what? Hold on. I'm just going to put you in a bit of a timeout. As a first, as a first comment, what? Yeah, I hear that. Um, Clever Girl says, I'm not sure he's wanting anything more than to support Sabran. At all. They just had a friendship, but he's very likable. Uh, it's all about that gossip, you know, the court drama. People are reading into it. People from all over the lands have heard about their close friendship with Sabran. So everyone's talking about it. Uh, I thought that was really interesting. Um, but what do we think of Innes as a whole? We were forced to learn about the exposition of um, their law through Sabran forcing Iad, who's obviously not from Innes, to not regurgitate, but to tell tell the tale. And Iad's version of it is incredibly different and it's blasphemous according to what the Innes sort of law is in a way. Um, I guess my question is, did you like the way that the exposition was put about? Darian says, I loved that moment. I didn't like it. It was so clearly forced exposition, but I, I get the way that they did it because you were learning about what the law should be whilst learning about what the lie is. But it was in the first five chapters. More interesting, more about the interesting law. Darian, what is it about this law that you uh, found interesting? I just like the... The, the fact that you have all these different interpretations or perspectives of this historical event that nobody really knows the truth about. So, you know, this sect has this interpretation of what happened. This religion has this interpretation. I like that. Um, the way it's delivered is, is very clunky and the exposition in the book is clunky. Um, but I, I do love the backstory that, um, they, that they, 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 they tell. And in the sense that I like what the backstory is, I don't necessarily like how they tell it. Sorry, I just got distracted with Jimmy's uh, comment. Mm -hmm. you, know, you need to be in us to win it. That's very good, Jimmy. That was very good. One of your better ones. I'll... You, you warming up for your comedy show? Puns always distract Maud. Yeah, I'm so predictable like that. <laughs> Colleen says, I think it corresponds to the suppression of women's role in history, at least in the West. Colleen, you ain't wrong. And I was going to say it, but I'm trying not to be so man Haiti this week for some reason. But don't you think it's funny, ladies of Book Chat, that uh, a dude was a piece of shit and decided to make himself the hero and they worshipped him for it. <laughs> Anyone want have thoughts on that? Kate? Any, any thoughts on Bar the Barethnet? Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Seems pretty normal in history, says Vaden. Uh, sounds like Top Gun Maverick review. Hmm. Sounds like Homelander from the boys. Uh, yes. One of the things I find really interesting is that um, particularly uh, in Western culture, it's very well the role of women we're finding out that there were women warriors vikings and there were women warriors who led um, armies i think uh, was it the scythians um there but so much of this has been suppressed um but if you look at some other cultures many native american cultures are matriarchal oh and it's um it's the women it, the clan lineage is determined by the mother yeah wow um, so it, and they um i mean they're still distinct male and female roles but um mm. 
it's it it's the mother and her family that have the biggest say yeah in, they're, in they're fact, considered the wise sort of like elder yeah i think it's actually very similar in indigenous cultures in australia as well it's like that sage yeah. like character yeah it's um I, I think at one time, a woman could divorce her husband just by putting his saddle outside the door in Navajo culture. Oh, wow. What a statement. Oh, I like that. Um, Michelle is saying there is so much Elizabethan Tudor era politics in Innes, right down to the virginal queen and the marriage question that dominates so much conversation about women, royalty, nobility, leaders yeah the queen is the breeder to get the next heir that's kind of the only use uh shout out to the great on hulu fantastic show uh piling says women vikings were like another species of boss <laughs> yeah baden says i mean how many heroes have very flattering writings about them that just so happen to be wealthy and or powerful men hmm. that, that's still relevant uh, Kate says, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Kate says, which is the more accurate way to have family trees, having the matriarch, because you can more easily trace from the woman who is actually giving birth compared to the guy who just didn't pull out. Thank you for making me read that one, Kate. <laughs> Very, no bullshit with you. There never is. That's what I'm here for. You will. Yep. Good, good, good. Good teamwork. Makes your dream work. Uh, Vaden says, I love mythology, but it's so, like so heavily male dominated for sexist reasons. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So there's exposition. You're learning about Innes. You're learning about the knight, uh, the knights of different virtues. Uh, you worship the knight of courage. You worship the knight of generosity. You worship the knight of, help me, generosity, courage. What was that one? Fellowship. Fellowship. Nice. What else was there? Beulah. All right. There, uh, courtesy, justice, fellowship, courage, temperance, generosity. Did you just Google it? I Googled it before. <laughs> oh, you did? Name them again, please. Okay. It's uh, courtesy, mm -hmm. justice, fellowship, courage, temperance. And generosity. All right. Now everyone has to say which knight they are in support of. Whose brooch badge? Courtesy, says play the board. Oh, very courteous if you play the board. You're participating. I'm the same as Kate. Justice. I say temperance. Temperance. Yes. Vaden says temperance. Colleen is all about generosity. Michelle, Darian, Aaron. I'm so curious about this. And do you think that courage? I agree. I agree. Lisa says generosity. I love that. You are generous, Lisa. Chris says, yeah, justice. <laughs> Aaron says courage or justice. Fellowship, I guess. I like fellowship for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a really great question. It's kind of like, you know, what misborn power would you have? But it's this one's kind of like really reflecting on who you are as a person, not what you could be, but who you are. Colleen says, really, you need all of those to have a well-rounded person. That is true. Oh, Pylang asks if we can say it again. We've got courtesy, justice, generosity, temperance, courage, and fellowship. Thank you, Vaden. I popped it in the chat. KP Dubs, what's up? Lovely to have you here. Being from the Midwest, it's often just ice. <laughs> Is that a drug joke? <laughs> Black Belt says generosity. Game Wizard says fellowship feels very Robin Hood and the Band of Merry Men. I, I was like fellowship of the ring. <laughs> it was very Lord of the Rings. Pylang says gracious. Oh, gracias. Gracias. Um, ice is meth in Australia. We call it ice, if that makes sense. Uh, Michelle says, it's also so interesting how people twist their virtues to justify their actions. Like that comb guy 
in the last few chapters we read. We hate comb. Uh, Black Belt says, actually, I'm going to be courtesy instead of generosity. Okay. Kate says, I would be a heretic, though. Uh, gripe. Ugh. We're spilling the tea. We're being, you know, all in with what we liked and what we didn't like. The narrator says, heretic? Do we have any Brits? I feel like as an Aussie, I'm just a slack version of the Brit pronunciation because I say patronize, um, patent, um, heretic. It's heretic. It's heretic, right? This is a an unmute one because otherwise you can... Yes, I say heretic, but that's just from the video game Tenchu. When he was like, burn in hell, you heretic. And so I stuck with it. If you ever played Tension. There's actually a, her I, there's a heretic video game too called Heretic, which I played when yeah. I was like 12. It was great. I up, up. also say heretic. Okay, good, good, good. Um, I say I, heretic. Oh, go ahead, yeah, I, I say heretic, but um, I believe the British pronunciation is heretic. Uh, how was it? Yeah. Really? Heretic. heretic. Tomato, tomato. Well, I say tomato. And I think I'm on my own with that one. Darian, what do you say with tomato or tomato? Tomato. Yay! Tomato. Lisa says there was another word she pronounced weird and I can't remember it. Yeah, there's a couple where I was like, ooh. <laughs> what? Yeah, it took me out of it a little bit to the point where like I, I grabbed the book and I was like, What's this word? I wondered if it was like spelt differently. You know, like worm or worm or like some people say wyvern or wyvern. Hold on, Nakey Blakey's I think weighing in on sexist discussions. A male Finnish descendant of mine took his wife's last name because she provided more for the family. <laughs> Pretty cool. Thank you. That's great input. Appreciate that one. Uh, play the board says heretic is the noun. Heretic is the adjective. Play the board. Thank you. That's some good insight. Kate says this is when the co uh, Commonwealth children say, fuck you, mum, I'm going to pronounce it how I want. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Nakey Blakey, I'm glad you're just here. Doesn't matter if you're late, we, we're here. Oh, there you go. Chris said it. Action versus person. No, you. all right, you're all over it. I love it. Uh, Michelle says we love a hard A sound in the colonies. <laughs> And Tosa Post is weighing in. And if you're just joining us, uh, Nakey Blakey, scroll up. We're talking about what knight you would worship or represent uh, in this particular book. I'm not sure if you read it. Fill me in. Um, it was either courtesy, justice, fellowship, courage, temperance, and generosity. Which of those words best resonates with you? I am team justice. Mm -mm -mm. Kate says, good old English. No wonder it's the hardest language to learn. Yeah. All right. So let's go back to Innes. Um, this is, as Michelle lovely, uh, lo wonderfully put, uh, very Tudor, very Elizabethan, very uh, women of the court, um, very much so, you know, we have a Queen Sabran who is a woman, but her importance is to procreate. What do we think of Sabran as a character? Because she does a lot of evolution as, and I think she almost evolves how Eard sees her and gets to know her. I'm going to skip straight into the, the peach of things. Um, did anyone see the smoochy moment? <laughs> More you're a grown woman, say it. Did anyone see that? coming because I did not get a, a vibe. I did not feel any tension. I did not know that there were lingering looks or um, moments of lust until their lips were touching. So did anyone see that coming? Nope. Jimmy did not see that coming either. All right. Uh, Colleen says, yeah, I thought we were slowly headed there. What tipped you off? What were the hints? Colleen? Um, yeah, she just really seemed to be attentive to Sabran. And um, the way Sabran kept kind of pulling her closer, um, it, it was really subtle, but it felt to me like 
they were building this relationship and Sobran would say things like, never leave me and um, you're the only one I can count on. And it, it could have remained platonic, but it seemed like it was just really easy to tip to the other side and become something more. Michelle says, you didn't pick up on the, I'm not actually going to have attachments to this person. I don't actually like this person. Oops, I fell in love coming. I know that's a bit of a trope. No, I have a Game of Thrones. Uh, you know, we saw what Cersei was like. I legit, this, oh, this is so telling of me, maybe. What does this say about me? I thought that when Sabran did that, she was trying to turn the handmaidens against each other. I thought she used things like affection or, um, you know, like a physical kind of like, um, acceptance or touch to cause jealousy amongst her handmaidens. I didn't think that it was genuine. I thought it was manipulative. What does that say? I, I guess I've got a Game of Thrones mind. I'm not sure. Kate says, as a gay person, that subtlety is something that we're kind of uh, tuned to because that used to be the only way we'd get queer content in mainstream media. So it kind of, I feel like I have kind of a gaydar for that thing and I saw it coming. It just means that I'm human. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Colleen says she also kept thinking of ways to stay in court longer. Yeah, because I thought her life was being threatened. I, don't, I just did donk. Um, Ember and Talia, lovely to have you here. Says, yeah, I had an inkling. Vaden, I saw it coming. Good. Um, Black Belt says, I saw it coming from Iad, but I wasn't sure if it was going to be reciprocated. Iad mentioned how much it hurt her to lie to Sabran, even though Sabran trusts her. Yeah, I just thought it was like that she'd gained trust. I just, hmm. The face off with the dragon was neat. Yeah. Uh, Kate says Sabran is also a very complicated character. Do you want to talk more about that, Kate? Even our opinions of her, because there's like, she's like the way a royal has to be. So she's very like cold and remote and can't let anyone close to her because she's not a person. She's you know, the royal we. She's she untouchable. Like yeah, she doesn't just get to be, like, a woman. She has to be Virtudum's paragon, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So she has that side of her. So no one can true. like, it's hard to let people in when you're like that, right? Because you have to be on all the time, and you have to be thinking of who's going to use you, who's, like, how does this, you know, anything I do or say or any emotions I make, how does this look in terms of the royal we and the rule? And not just her rule, but the fact that she's like many generations down the line and this whole thing with the bloodline is starting to like weaken against the dragons and she has like the pregnancy problem, like all this stuff. Mm. So she, it, she wouldn't be able to be, even if she w didn't have all that stuff, like any one of those things would be a lot in order to let herself open up to someone, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I love her evolution. You know, the first few chapters, she's a bitch. <laughs> she's not likable. She's very, very stern. She's very cold. She's very detached. And then we start seeing her show some of the vulnerabilities. And she does look to Iad for truth because she's surrounded by yes women. And Iad's like, I'm not going to protect you. I'm not going to say what you want to hear. Like, I'm going to say the hard stuff that you kind of need to face. Um, and then sort of when you see that trust established between them, which I thought was manipulative, anyway, um, it is interesting to kind of really get an understanding of who Sabran is behind the mask. Uh, there's great conversations about how she wears her armor and she's worn it so much that it's like she just doesn't know how to take that off from time to time and, and be that real person. Um, but it's cool when you start to see, oh, see, this is the other thing. Iad's technically, I thought she was like a spy. And so when Sabran starts relaying sort of like what's happening within the court, she's like, I've finally gotten to a position where she trusts me and she's telling me everything. And that's what she was trying to get. She was trying to get information like a spy. Um, but uh, Michelle says, Sabran to me seems too petrified of her life to play games like that with her household. She doesn't really own her power. She hides in it. That's a good point. Maybe I'm giving Sabran a little bit more 
credit. Um, Chris says, cold to preserve her authority. Uh-huh. Baden says, Sabran has incredible responsibility, even for a queen. It's one thing for her queendom to be resilient, uh, to reliant, sorry, on her. It's another when the entire world is, and you need to have a child to prevent the apocalypse. Well said. Ember and Aaliyah says, the women of the bedchamber plus the queen's reluctance to marry made me wonder if there would be conflict between the queen's duty to produce an heir and, a, um, and her desires. I expected at least some physical closeness. Well, when you say it like that, of course she doesn't want to marry and stoink. She likes women. That makes sense now. Thank you for making it very obvious to me now. Uh, Nakey says, I'll have to have a look into reading this book and join in more. Until then, good night, friends. Thank you, Nakey Blakey. Lovely to have you. Read a book about dragons. Uh, he had the spy who got too close to her target. It's a great trope. We love it. Why didn't I see it coming? Uh, Lisa says she's trying to get closer to her so she could protect her. And I'm actually usually quite a romantic. And I'm just like, mm, no, shady. <laughs> um... Chris said it earlier, how cool was the, stoink, yeah, I say stoink, uh, how cool was the moment where she faced off the dragon? So, Firedel, 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 um, comes to the, to the Innes Castle, uh, the castle, 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 tower. I'm waiting for someone to be correct castle thanks Baden. um and i thought that was really interesting because you would have thought that she would have been protected she would have been taken away she would have been somewhere put somewhere safe she marched straight out and she confessed it yet she didn't even think she just did and i got i gained a lot of respect for sabran in that moment where she faced like knowing knowing that <laughs> katie doves <laughs> <laughs> he punned he punned in the comments and it distracted me fire adele don't you like her songs <laughs> uh she's very very brave yes but a little bit stupid because it's like you know her whole purpose is to stay alive so she can have an heir um so for her to kind of get in literally the line of fire adele <laughs> that was I, I don't know i thought that was pretty interesting i thought that was pretty cool um do you think that Sabran had an inkling that it was Iad who protected her? Or do you think that Sabran is convinced of her sainthood and that's what protected her from the flame? Oh, Aaron, lovely. Can't guarantee you'll finish it by next week. You're going to try. That's all we can do. All we can do is try sometimes. Um, She brought fire to the rain. <laughs> oh, nice. That's Ad Adele. I get it now. Uh, Vaden seemed to believe, I'm guessing, in her sainthood. Lisa says, sorry if I only pay half attention descriptions of what people and places look like. I can't picture it anyways. Oh, I, half, I get it. Yeah, that's fair. I don't really know what they look like, to tell you the truth. I just, I'm using the narrator's different accents, I guess, to piece it together a little bit better. Um, Jimmy says, I feel like she believed in her sainthood. Yeah, because sorcery is the devil. Lisa says, like, I mean, you say castle and I say, sure. <laughs> I get it. Toaster Poster says, Adele is on fire. Is that why she's rolling in the deep? Ah, <laughs> oh, chat. Clever Girl says, they don't seem to describe most of the characters very much. No, Sabran has black hair. One of the, ch one of the handmaidens is a mega babe. That's all I got. She also says, pretty sure this sheltered rich lady who's been told her whole life she's a saint thinks she's a saint. <laughs> the sass is strong with this one. Vaden says she did talk about how she didn't understand why she wasn't protected the second time. Plus, people, the people tend to be very strong in their faith. True, true, true. Also, if Sabran did recognize that it was sorcery, she would have to send Iad away or kill her, likely. And so that was an easier truth to swallow as well. Um, what do we think of the Nameless One and Firedell? Let's talk about the lore of all that. Let's get into the dragons, the meat and the bones. Uh, the Nameless One supposedly hasn't come back. Firedell is like the right-hand dragon, worm. Uh, what do you think about the Westerns? Is this all making sense? Does anyone have questions? Dragons. Right-wing dragon. Oh, like 
Alt left, alt right, right wing. What did I say? Oh, you're correcting me on nuanced terminology. Clever. Uh, dragons. Who wants to talk about the dragons? I'm going to stop talking. Someone else will. I believe that, um, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that the, the dragons are heavily based on uh, folklore. Like, um, so whatever they pulled from said folklore, whatever it may be, it, it is uh, strongly the base behind it. Um, but it seems like um, one could just be smoke and mirrors, hence the nameless one. And then one could be like a legitimate, like the right. last dragon kind of thing where, you know, because there's always like, there's always myth and legend and people are always will believe in a myth and a legend if it's gone long enough, as opposed to someone that's just like, Oh, there's, you know, a dragon over there. No one really knows who it is. You know, it's just a dragon. But uh, that's just my opinion on it. You know, nothing nothing too in-depth, but that's my take. I think I get it. I'm going to be real with you. I only understood about 30% of that. Okay. Well, basically I'm saying that it's only believable when the lore grows. Otherwise, no one's going to be afraid of it. So I think that it's mostly... Uh, you know, like, like sainthood, it, you know, it's got a lot of believability behind it because there's so many people talking about it. There's so much stuff written about it. You know, that's, that's my logic. Except the worms are in front of them. Oh, I'm aware of that, but I'm just saying, for example, there are elephants in this world, right? They exist. You see them, but there's also a lot of lore about elephants. You know, like they're considered to be gods in some in some countries. You know, so what I mean. So it it it's all depending on the perception of the animal or the creature. That's what I'm trying to say. If that makes sense. Okay, I guess. You <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Not for me today. Not in this mindset. Not with this brain. I'm just, I'm just trying to help a mod out. That's all I'm saying. I'm yep. just trying to help a mod out so we can make, make sense of this. That's so all this I'm is saying. what happens when I say I'm going to stop talking, someone say something. Oliphants. Timothy Oliphants, Black Belt. Absolutely. What we do yes. know about these dragons is that there are the high western dragons. There are the good dragons that those in the east are trained to fly um, in as like soldiers of the water, high sea, high sea, high sea. It's a note. The sea god. Thank you. They're the sea gods because we are looking at water versus fire. So the high dragons from the sea gods are the water dragons who are big and they work with humans. They are teamed up. They are the good dragons. Then you have the worms, the nameless one, the fire del, are fire dragons. They are bad. Escalon has been taken over by the nameless one who now has some sort of like puppeteering, mind melding, controlling powers that we didn't really know about. Um, so that's kind of what we're talking about. The fire side use their worms to procreate with like badges and shit to create cro cro crocotrice, crocoshits, uh, bu buffaloes, hydragons, be bygones, and so on and so on. Uh, yet the now, I say cockatrice, but they say cockatrice. What is it? It's cockatrice. No! Is it minotaur or minotaur? Minotaur. No! Minotaur? <laughs> I do say, co I say cockatrice, though. Yay! No. You do, too? Oh. No, it's cockatrice. I say cockatrice. I say cockatrice as well. Okay, that's so fascinating. Vaden, how did you get cockatrice? That's how it sounds like every time I hear I've heard it before. <laughs> I've never heard cockatrice before. This is a, this is new to me. How cool is language? That's fascinating. I played a game called NetHack on the DOS MS DOS computer back in like 1991, and a lowercase C was a cockatrice. Cock but my whole family said cockatrice because when you step on it, if you step on a cockatrice cadaver, you turn to stone. Um, anyway, that's one of the little half breed creatures that they are creating 
Um, oh, it was a, tra a dragon banging an emu was a cockatrice? No. They were like banging, well, it was like some sort of law. And I was like, what? So it's like a, to create the army, the worms would procreate. They would make, you know, to forge their breedage with uh, the oxen? Ox? A dragon bang the chicken. A what, what? The cockatrice, a dragon bang the chicken. Dragon and a chicken. There's a dragon and a dog or a wolf created like the another hybrid Baden I need you to do some quick googling for me and get those answers wait what answer yeah yeah, yeah. so the worms would breed with different animals to create the army so a dragon and a chicken were a cockatrice oh yes a dragon and a snake was a basilisk thank you Chris good There's two others. Jay Hawker says, this isn't the kind of chat I expected. We're literally talking about the lore of the book. This is how the, the fire army, the fire dragons decided to make an army. They were like, go and fuck the animals. It's, it's in the book. It's in the, it's in the book. Sky Bison. Thank you, Pi Lane. Always coming in with the goods. Uh, anyway, so that's the the two splits on the dragons. And then you've got the West side who are like, oh, the nameless ones only at bay because of our lineage. Um, you got Tane who's become, was a part of the sea, sea guards. Um, what? Kate says the dragon's secret power is horniness. Just the worms. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> um, yeah, Kate's like, hey, this is true, right? Nobody get offended. This is what this is what the, the book the book is about. Um, Jimmy was kind of going into dragon mythos, dragon lore. Um, we, have we kind of, have we seen sort of like water versus fire dragons before? Yeah, a goat and a lion and a dragon toaster poster. It's an orgy. <laughs> Um, Thank one you, of Colleen. the things about the dragons, yeah, well, I, I'm, my mind's going in a different direction as usual. Please but, take uh, me there. <laughs> uh, one of the things about the dragons is we see good dragons and bad dragons, but it seems like the people of Venice just say bad dragons. Yeah. All dragons are, are bad. And that's part of the reason that they don't want to form an alliance with worm worshippers and these heathen heretics, um, you know. Um, and that's kind of very, again, in that Elizabethan kind of Tudor-esque time where it's like, you know what, if you, or like paganism and the Catholics, where it's just like, you know what, if there's a hint of this, you're all blanket bad and you all must go so yeah they can't differentiate between like even though there's different types of dragons they're from different regions they hold different um merits skills and harness different elements they've all been sort of cast yeah in that one sort of light of being evil which is going to be a huge awakening when tani and her excuse me whatever's happening with her storyline oh i'm drinking a fizzy drink i was like wow i'm getting punished right now um so yeah instead of talking about dragon sex um let's chat about tane and uh Arisima and what's going on there because again it's not just a um linear story you've got tane her best friend she's about to find out if she's getting cast in uh you know in the library or if she's got the feather island or if she's going to be a sea guard 
and maybe ride a dragon. And then she sees this foreign person. We don't know who he is, but she's trying to save his life, even though you don't know their relationship. And then in comes Nicolae's, and you don't really know who this Nicolae's character is, but he's having his whole issue in there as well. She goes off, gets into the academy, has a nemesis already and a horny friend. And then while that's happening, Nicolae's learns who this guy is. It ties it back to the West. He then gets caught. Bloody what's his name? The dude and his, they have a very similar name, the dude and his girlfriend who are so naive and think that they could literally send, They can. he can travel to a place where foreigners are not welcome and march up to the leader and be like, you need to form an alliance with someone that you've not wanted to talk to and have anything to do with for many, many years now. No, not Loth and Kit. No, the woman who was in the, uh, Trude, that's it, True and Prude, um, Trude, Trude, Trudy, Trudy, Trude, and her boyfriend, who also starts with like a T as well. No, S, -S, -S. it starts with S. Sil, Sil, Sil something, S, Y, L, Silwa, Silwan, Silwan, Sil, Sil. I mean, this book is 9,000 pages. Do you really think I'm going to be able to find it? Sulyard. Sulyard! Trium Sulyard is the dude. You are exactly right. Sulyard. The whole chat's going on about it. Thank you so much. These 17-year-olds are just causing murder left and right. I know. Naive, naive, naive. And Trude is here going, no, I read a couple of books and I think I know the truth now. Uh, and Iad's like, oh, what do you mean? Anyway. Uh, Arisama, what do we think about this place? Do we get an understanding of the culture, how it's so different to the West? Do we like sort of like the academy process, the relationships with the dragons? Let's talk about this place and the clays and all of what's going on here. What are we digging about it? What do we like? <laughs> Kate says, the most realistic depiction of a teenager ever is, well, I read a book once, so I know everything about it. The truth will set you free. Nice, Jimmy. That's a good pun. Uh, any thoughts? Who wants to open up the discussion about the e East? East? East. Sulyard and Trude. Right on the page. Right there. Nicolay's. Thought he was okay, now he's a bit of a dick. He's got a bit of a demise happening. He's now on a pirate ship. I wish Tane had more time with her dragon. Yes, Michelle. So Tane's journey, this is your Hermione. This is your, I want to work hard and not smart. I feel like I almost have to suffer because I cannot have balance if I'm not living and breathing this thing that is my destiny, that is my identity, um, then I'm wasting the opportunity or I'm not living up to its full potential. Uh, Tane gets into the Sea Guard. Uh, she's got a nemesis. He's a dick, but I like that moment. It's fun. I think that that's a cool part of the book. Um, Vaden says, disappointed by Tane losing all of her hard work for years because she made one dumb mistake. And it's interesting to see her reasoning behind it, that sh she's so focused on the selection process, trying to get into the Sea Guard, that she broke a huge rule because she didn't want it to affect her chance. She didn't want everything to get shut down because he might have a plague. Um, yeah, that was her lesser evil thing to do and she thought she'd get away with it except Nicolae's is a dick um and her best friend oh that was so sad gets beheaded in front of her look away Tane oh that was really sad <laughs> um but let's weigh in about Tane um uh, clever girl says someone has to save that dragon yeah the dragon's been kidnapped by pirates uh, Kate says, I feel so sad for her because everything that happened to her and ruined her dream just kind of happened because of an act of kindness. Colleen says, I wonder if it wouldn't, I wonder if it would have been different if she'd been honest with her dragon from the beginning. Lisa says, I hate Nicolay's. 
Now, Clays, who was commissioned by Sabran to create an elixir to keep her young, everlasting, and he couldn't do it, so she banished him. And he's basically been ostracized to this small island in a trading post in the middle of nowhere. And even though he has some few luxuries, this is the thing. I, the lesson I learned from these chapters and from the um, Arisima storyline for Nicolae's, no matter how bad you think you have it, it can always get worse. And that's what's happening with him. He sacrificed a lot of integrity and goodness so that he could try to get ahead and get his life back. And it got worse. Not the best characteristic of Sabran. No, Colleen, do you want to talk about why you think Sabran wanted this particular elixir? And since we get to learn more about Sabran, if this fits in with who she was? Well, it, I think she said something, um, or it sounded, uh, maybe Nick Clay said it, that she didn't she wanted to live forever so she wouldn't have to marry and have children it seems like she was absolutely terrified of having children of giving birth um understandably in my opinion um and the pressure on her to do that um and, and then when she found out she was pregnant she was already afraid of being um, eclipsed by the baby. Um, so I think she was really insecure. I think she was very afraid of being in a loveless marriage, uh, being forced to have a child, um, and just all the responsibility that was with that. And she could, if she could actually get uh, an elixir that would cause her to live forever, then um, that could help her to avoid all of that. Um, yeah, but it goes back to, it's a queendom, she's in charge, but she's not really in control of who she is. She still has to, I, I mean, there's this great moment where she's like, her worth is only if she provides an heir. And I think that she wanted to kind of, you see moments where she's trying to buck tradition, where she's trying to kind of path, uh, pave her own path. She wanted to call her unborn baby a different name that wasn't traditional. She wanted to, um, she was reluctant to get married, even though every other time it was like, you know, there was a process behind it all. So I hear you on that. Um, Lisa says it kind of seemed like she wanted it so she didn't have to get married. Why is that? Because I think maybe she's gay. Maybe she's maybe she's not wanting a man. It'd be more interesting if she didn't want to have children. Uh, Michelle says, man, if that, if it isn't even, sorry, man, it isn't even that Nicolais couldn't do it. It's mostly that he literally drank and gambled away his opportunity to actually do this alchemical achievement. This man still thinks he can do it and gamble his way out. Yeah, that's why Nicolas is not great. Peppermint Steve, thank you so much for the follow. We are doing a book club here. We're covering the Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. We've read the first half of the book, which is this much book. Um, yes, something that, something that Nicolas said uh, while he was trying to uh, form this elixir he um, he said something about looking at um, what some of the ancient people had done to try and create an elixir of life, even though many of them had died in the process. And it made me think of, I believe it was the first emperor of China, um, Chi, I think his name was, and he actually ended up dying of mercury poisoning um, from an elixir that they were creating for him uh, that was supposed to preserve his life and make him um, immortal like that. 
I'm doing work things that have deadlines of an hour ago. I apologize. But Colleen, what you say is always going to be astute and fantastic. And the fact that people are commenting on it, I'm going to start reading those out as well. I'm sorry I let you down in that moment. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, Jimmy says, Nicole is the worst. Kate says, imagine how she felt though about her only task being birthing a child, even if it wasn't a sexuality thing at all. That idea is just horrifying. And childbirth's scary. Childbirth is fucking scary. There you go. Direct verbatim. Uh, Baden says there is such a, uh, there's an interesting parallel with Nicolas and Sabran as he married a woman and had a kid but had a male lover. Ooh, yeah, great observation with that one. Black Belt says, yeah, it seems like Sabran was more hung up on the marriage part than the produce and air part. I also, um, I also think part of her reasoning for wanting the elixir was to rebel against what she was expected to do. That's what I'm thinking as well. Kate says, as a woman who doesn't want children and doesn't particularly like children, I still got told today only until recently that I changed my mind and I'm not a queen or anything. I'm just a schmo. Starsfan68 says, hi. Colleen says, oh, thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, today I, I literally have to book a flight and I don't even, okay. Um, clicking a button. I just have to check out flights that I need to book for tomorrow. Gonna New York. Um, I'm stressed, stars. I'm actually quite stressed. Uh, sorry, guys. Who wants to chat? <laughs> stars run the news. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, well, hold on. KP Dub says no stream tomorrow then. I, I'm no longer doing Friday streams because I'm launching a new show on AMP and that's going to take place from six, uh, 5 till 6.30. I'm streaming today. <laughs> yeah. Um, so homework, if anyone wants to do it, is to talk about uh, Nicolay's, um, what you liked about the book, favorite part about the book. Who wants to go first? Please. All right. So okay. the uh, the upside of the books, uh, you know, like I said, um, it, it is, um, I love dragons, as you already know, by my username, Sprinkles the Dragon Cat. Um, so that's always going to be the best part of any book because dragons are just awesome, um, regardless if they're, you know, liked or not liked. Um, I would say the worst part of the book is what you said before. It's kind of like an ADHD kind of thing where the book is in one part. Like, like that TikTok reference. I'm alive. I'm dead. I'm alive. I'm dead. I'm dead again. You know? The dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understood <laughs> like, that reference. Exactly what it looks like. It's just like, I'm here. I'm there. I'm everywhere. That, so that's a little discombobulating. But, but uh, once you... Uh, once you uh, figure out the uh, the pattern, rather, it, it gets more sense. Like, I, as I mentioned before, I had to go through, like, several pages again because I just, like, what did I read? I don't even know what's going on here. Like, like what are they trying to tell me here? Is there is there a secret code that I'm missing, you know? So, it's like, is it every first letter? I don't know. But those are the things that I would say uh, are positives and negatives about the book. I like that. Positives and negatives. Who wants to go next for positives and negatives of the book? Po pos Colleen says, I'm loving the political intrigue. Because there's political intrigue, there's mythology and mythical creatures, there's... I need a dragon to fly. Oh, I'd get cold. Oh, I'd feel sick. <laughs> How's me being whingy? Oh, I don't want to ride a dragon. <laughs> Um, oh, I tried to call Trisha today. Vaden, best and worst part of the book so far, go. Which storyline are you most intrigued with? Go. Okay, definitely, yeah, with the power of the orange tree. Like, secret organizations that, like, um, you know, are there to, like, help protect the world, essentially, but have to operate in secret. Always interesting. Yeah. And she's a mage too, so that's even better. So she's like only she's like one of the very few people who guys who's magic in the book. So it's always interesting how she uses, it, especially when she protects Sabron and just uh, her also like her demeanor, her general personality. She's very thoughtful, very like you know caring. 
Worst? The worst part, probably just so far as, uh, I don't know the worst, but I guess Nick Clay is kind of the worst right now. Yeah. Just because he seems so selfish and ridiculously short-sighted. But it also kind of makes me interested because now that he's on the on the ship with the queen of the, you know, the pirates. Yes. And she's being treated like, you know, shit, essentially. And I'm really curious to see what he does there. You know, how, he, how his interactions with the queen and how him being a surgeon over there changes him, maybe. Okay. Favorite? Oh, you like the priory parts. Uh, True Scorn's like, I'm only on chapter 17. I haven't really gotten deep into the magic system and how it works. That's fair. Um, my favorite part, I I also like the fact that Ied has magic abilities and that she's kind of planted there. Um, I think that storyline is probably the more interesting. My least favorite, Kit. You just had to tie up loose ends so you killed him. Why'd you have to kill Kit? And Trude, she's shit. Trude's trying to out Eard. Man, she saved her. What are you doing? You're on the same team, but you're fighting against each other. <laughs> Come on, be smarter. You're so naive, Trude. There you go. That's mine. Lisa, favorite, least favorite? Um, definitely Eard is my favorite character so far. I'm, I'm enjoying her story overall. Um, Obviously, I hate Nicolay, so he's yeah. my least favorite. I am. I'm looking really looking forward to the second half of the book because I feel like what I'm most excited to learn more about is the whole priory and and also what's going on with Loth. Yeah, and, and his storyline. I'm really interested to see where that's going. Um, and I I'm excited to, to learn more about the pirates. <laughs> That's taken a change. For me, I'm like, we just don't need more characters. There's so much going on. I'd like it to be simplified somewhat. Black Belt says, my favorite part is the two sides of the religion and how each side views the same historical event, but in very different ways. I have a feeling that we'll find out that both are right in some ways, but the truth will lie somewhere between the two sides. Interesting. Clever Girl says, I kept picturing Iad a little like Tamar in Shadow and Bone. Baden says, Trude's plan to scare Sabran that got Sabran's husband killed made me really just like, I didn't mean to do that. It's like, all right, dumb. Play the board says, I found the names of things really curious. I'm hoping that they will merit deeper reflection after the second half. Uh, Emberant says, I have a hard time focusing on political intrigue on my best day and my focus has been hard to come by lately. So I'm here for the teasing out of law from the different regions and the individual human journeys. I'm relying on book club to help me fill in the parts that I miss. Hey, if you've got any questions or anything that you're a little bit kind of sketchy on or need a bit more info, hit us up. We can try and explain it a little bit further. Uh, Darian, favorite and least favorite? Um, favorite part is the backstory and the lore. I really like that. Um, least favorite. I don't like any of the characters in this book at all. None of them. <laughs> what? Kate's going like to marry Ead. What's going on? They're just all annoying. All of them. But you, you've you been smashing through this book. You're yeah, like ahead of the reading schedule. Yeah. I'm doing a lot of driving. <laughs> yeah, I want to finish the book. It's an interesting story, but I mean, I'm, I don't... I don't like these characters all that much. They're just like somewhat just underdeveloped and I just can't really click with them. It's not like Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire in general where these you have horrible characters but they're so well developed you really empathize with them and just feel their story. It's not like that at all. It's just, oh, this character is this way. This character is this way. I, it just doesn't click with me. Interesting. But I love the law. It's it's a really good, interesting backstory, and that has me learning all the history of what caused it to get to this point. That is what has, has hooked me. Do you? What are your thoughts on Iad then? Because you know she's notoriously all our faves. 
Um, she's all right. I mean, it's kind of just like, yeah, she's the protagonist and, you know, she is, you know, the magic wielder and she has her perspective of what the truth is and all that. It's, yeah. She's all right. She's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you think of the second half of the book though. That will be very fun. How much ahead have you read? I am on chapter 66. Oh my god. How are you reading this so fast? I'm driving. I'm in traffic an hour each morning, an hour each evening. And I started like in the middle of April. No, no, middle of May. Beginning of May. Yeah. Okay, so that's five weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you think that if there were just less characters, we could go a little bit deeper into their complexity? I think if it was two books or three books, you, you would have been able to get deep into it. I think trying to have it as a single book is its biggest downfall. Okay. And I love that people have a differing opinion than that too. I think that's really fascinating. Black Belt says, you beat me. I'm only on 64. What are you doing rooting ahead, Black Belt? You just outed yourself. <laughs> um, but speaking of, Black Belt says, I think it's funny how the normal fantasy slash YA protagonist in this story would be Trudy as she's the young one who learned something and took drastic action to solve the problem. But we follow the actual adults in this story who all view her as dumb and just in the way. I could see it being a completely different story if Trudy was the main point of view. How fascinating. What a really, really intriguing take on that. You're right. She's young. She's adventurous. She's trying to, you know, she sees a flaw and a problem and she's, she's like 10 steps ahead and she's kind of figured it out on her own. And yet here we are the whole time being like, ah, oh, you idiot. You're so naive. Yeah. What a fantastic take. Oh, who wants to top that? Also, if, if someone hasn't told me their favorite and least favorite part so far, please unmute. I thought I'd kind of uh, address everyone, but I could be very wrong at this stage. Has anyone not said their favorite and least favorite? Kate, did you? Has everyone said it? I did mine. I didn't. I had stepped away to go to the bathroom. I was still listening, though. Uh, my favorite, Eid. But I think runner-up is all the East Glenn stuff. Like, I liked that whole city, the whole, like, vibe of it. I found that stuff really, like... Oh, a Scotland. Was my, it was, yeah, it was my aesthetic. So I really liked all that stuff. My least favorite part is... I think Trudy. I found her even more annoying than Nicholas. That's funny. <laughs> and just like hearing Black Belt's like, you know, Same, perspective but... take. So, so fascinating. Oh, sorry. It cut off. Go again. Oh, I was just saying like Nicholas is still, he sucks. But <laughs> I don't know. I just personally found Trudy more annoying. Well, Nicholas only became a douche canoe because Trudy put him in that position in a way. Well, Iad did, but Trudy had a pact her boyfriend went peace i'm going to do it on my own uh i don't want you to get involved and i'm going to take initiative and he just showed up being like oh cool literally i'll get killed on site um but i've got an important convincing so uh, i alone even though i'm not even a noble of the court just want to try to convince you to make peace because the world's going to end well yeah of course buddy well done Pilate says it sounds like Trudy was intrusive. Oh, intrusive. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't stick the landing on that one. I'm sorry that I even tried. Uh, let's talk about Escalon. Escalon's a really fascinating place. They are the traitorous city. They have decided to start worshipping the nameless one again. Uh, they have broken the the treaty, the pact um, that's been established um, where they were sort of like on the good terms with Innes, which seems to be kind of like the epicenter of the lands. Um, in fact, Innes is so anti-dragon that even if you trade with anyone who likes worms, uh, then you're on the shit list as well. But I think that Escalon had like a very fascinating thing. Like we learn it through Kit and Loth's eyes. Um, and yes, I love it when they met the princess wearing the mask of uh, Firedell, says Darian. Yeah, there's this enigma and you're kind of learning new customs, new traditions, um, but there is this 
a constant sense of dread because they have been sent to their deaths. They have no lifelines. They have really, they are instantly in survival mode. And so they try to navigate the court. Kit, who has an abundance of positivity and continues to kind of see the funny side of it and keep his sense of humor. And Loth, who we've kind of been told is a little bit sensitive. He's not going to last very long if this is how his life is depending on it. Um, he's very trusting. And so I think we're going to see Loth getting very, very hardened very quickly. The death of his best friend Kit, that's a really good start there. He's bonded with some, again, mythical creature who's taken him to the Priory where he's now no longer able to leave. But we discover that this princess has exchanged information secretly to Loth to try and meet up with him to tell him the truth. And that is that the original ambassador has been killed and that's likely going to be his path as well. That her father, the king, has sided with the Nameless One because he's been possessed by the Nameless One. Um, and that he is being drugged intermittently to try and stop um, him from being taken over. The uh, Donna Marosa and the Donna Mata. Thank you, Darian. Yes, they are their correct terminology. Again, where it's like, oh my God, different names for different regions for different things. It's <laughs> four lots of them in one book. Uh, but that was really, really interesting again, but it's this deception. And I think Colleen was talking about this earlier, the perception of everything. So Escarlan's supposed to just have turned, but then you realize that it's a little bit of a worm tail situation where the king is not making his own decisions and the princess, the daughter, is trying to save the land and trying to get the message out there. Now, here's where it gets patchy for me. She asked him to get tainted by the plague why? Who can explain that to me? Because I got a little bit lost there. Vaden. Yeah, basically what she said was that um, if you don't go with her with the plague, they won't like, basically let you in there. There was something about the plague, that you happen to have the plague that allowed them to that let you in. Like uh, I think the, the Ichthmion or whatever it's called, the creature, like sniffed him and later on it was able to sense it on him, which is I think partially why he got help from it. Got it. <laughs> Um, part of it is the plague should allow him to walk through draconic territory without being instantly attacked because I guess they could smell the, the dragon, whatever, in him. Uh, uh, Colleen says the dragons were supposed to leave them alone, but it didn't seem to, seem to help that much. So it's kind of like those video games where you have to steal the soldier's um, uniform to try and pass off as being a part of the enemy so that you can undergo the mission. Got it, got it, got it. But instead now he's infected. Cool. Uh, Madeline32230 says, hello. First chatter just followed. Thank you so much. We're doing book chat. We've only got a couple of minutes left. I might have to wrap up early because I'm going loco. But we're doing The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. It is a fantasy book that is this thick. We read the first half. Next week we're going to be finishing it and talking about the rest of it. The infection is the espionage. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like I just feel like there's so many layers and such different sort of like cultures to describe for four different quarters. And then what is apparent is not necessarily what is happening. So there's political intrigue, there's genuine intrigue, there's deception, there's betrayal. What is this? The Princess Bride? <laughs> um Last question that I'm sorry, I just saw the photo that picture that you posted. It's frozen, so it's not a gif, but it's going. Uh, so it's toothless, isn't it? You're all posting dragons in the reading chat on Discord. Uh, last thing, what do we think is going to happen in the second half of the book? Darian and Black Belt, you're exempt from answering this question. But what do we I think? I will stay silent. Oh, yeah, good. But um, are you? Can you say like, ooh, like it's it's it gets better? Can you give me like a little spoiler-free kind of take, Darren? It gets interesting. Oh, oh, I regret everything. <laughs> Lisa says my two favorite movie dragons. Is that Smaug? That looks like a Smaug in my chat. Yep, and toothless. Um, Baden says, I think there was some foreshadowing when, with Sabran, maybe having a boy instead of a girl, even though that's never happened before. I thought she lost her child. 
I thought the dragon came and went, oh, no, you're done. You're done. <laughs> you're infertile. Ain't gonna happen. She did lose her child. Got it, got it, got it. Oh, but Black Belt said, ooh, no, I told you you're exempt. Colleen says, I'll be very upset if they don't save the dragon. I know, they had such a good bond. The dragon was understanding. Tane finally had an ally. Uh, Lisa said she did lose it and it was a girl. Uh, and then they are barren after they get pregnant. They can only conceive once. So if they lose the baby, that is it. Uh, Black Belt Nick, who's in here, says, maybe they'll talk about dragon sex. <laughs> Get out of here. Why don't you jump in the call, Nick? Why don't you jump in the call when you do this? Um, what else is happening? Something about a Scarlet's going to come back. What's going to happen with Loth? What's going to happen with Nicklaze? Don't really care. Iad's going to go Super Saiyan. That's my suggestion. She's going to go full power. She's going to take an orange. She's going to be like, mm, boom, let's go. Uh, I hope they end up together. Vaden says, I'm curious about the dragon with the green eyes. The female dragon? Was there another one? Uh, Neamathan says Darian. I don't recall their names <laughs> dad dragon dong do oh, no kate <laughs> um all right your homework is to finish the book we are going to read this thick boy we're going to read the whole thing we're going to weigh in about it and this time next week five o'clock pt um it's going to be fascinating i'm going to bring this with me on my five hour flights to and from new york which is going to be fantastic Jimmy says, read it and enjoy. Thank you, Kate. Ah, oh, I'm like so stressed. <laughs> but I think I booked the flight. I had to cancel a photo shoot that I was supposed to do tomorrow. And I feel terrible about it because I was organizing it up to, they already changed it to accommodate for me. And they sent someone over today to do a COVID test so that I would be ready for it on set tomorrow. And then I canceled. I feel like a dick but I'm trying to do it all. Thanks, Colleen. I will. Lots of vitamins. I'm so sunburnt as well. What an idiot. Oh, Dragonheart. Sorry, Smaug, you are demoted, but slightly. Uh, Toaster Poster says, you know, I'm going to knuckle down and get this done. Toaster Poster, I think if you read a book like this, it will feel like such an accomplishment. I really do. Kate says, eat something. I don't even know if I, I think I had some lunch. I think I had some lunch, but I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook up some dinner now. It's going to be great. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for bearing with me, this book club. Um, I'll keep it posted and locked to my social media and make sure you comment on absolutely everything 10 times because I'm going to be busting my butt trying to make that all happen. And honestly, I'm going into this job being like, I don't know what I'm doing. I shouldn't say that publicly. Oh dear. I know exactly what I'm doing and I'm confident I've got this. I have to stop this right now because I am talking too much and I'm telling truths. I was just acting. I was just acting. Jay Hawker, don't even think about that. You shut. Jay. Jay. Uh, do we want to... Pass this on. Being a book club, let's support... Lou, it's been a hot minute since I've raided Lush's Lou. He is a member of uh, the squad. Make sure you drop by, say hi. Thanks, Lise. Thank you, Play the Board. Happy reading, everyone. Let's say hi to Lou. Make his day. Good night. Good evening. Good night.